Hey guys, welcome back to Vic Ferrari's Garage. Do me a favor, hit that like, hit the subscribe, and send this to someone else so you can help other people out because that's what I'm trying to uh, do is help everybody out. So today's episode is going to be on inline thermostats. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Ecotech that I put in the sand rail, everybody said the best I can run is like 230 on a 100 degree day, uh, 208 on, you know, a 60 degree day. So I tested it out. Sure enough, that's what I ran. Um, I ran 208 on a 60 degree night and then it got up to 80 degrees right before I pulled the tranny out and it was running 219. So I'm sure if it was a hundred degrees, it'd be 230. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the aftermarket thermostat housing that you can buy, you can't put any thermostat in it. To my knowledge, it's the only aftermarket thermostat housing out there. So if you guys know of one that you can put a thermostat in that exits out the engine straight and doesn't come around the back of the engine, um, let me know. But there is a cure. It is the aftermarket. You can get this from all your performance online places. You can get it from eBay is where I got it because it was cheaper on eBay. Uh, believe it or not, Jegs was selling it. And on eBay, Jegs was selling it, but they didn't charge shipping on eBay. So I, I would buy on eBay. Anyway, so the way this works is it's a two-piece deal. You cut out two inches of your radiator um, hose and you install this in between. It can come apart. You've got your thermostat in there. You can put any temperature you want. I'm gonna run a 180 because that's what the uh, Saturn Ion Redline ran is a 180 thermostat. And then when you put it in, you're gonna wanna make sure that your spring goes towards the engine so that the flow goes through the spring first. If you put it in backwards, which you can do, you are going to overheat your engine because now it can't tell the spring to uh, open early enough. So you do that, you put the two halves together and you put your screws in and that's how that works. Now, let me explain why you need a thermostat in your system. So, on the board here, I have a uh, engine or a school in our situation. We're going to just look at it as a grade school, grades one, uh, kindergarten through six. And down here, we've got the radiator or the subdivision where all the kids live. So this is really important. Pay close attention to this. You're going to learn a lot if you do. So if you go to the school with a school bus, now the bus is going to be the same as water, okay? And the water is gonna pick up the heat out of the engine. Or in this case, the bus is gonna pick up the kids out of the school, okay? So as the water comes around or the bus comes around, it's at 180 degrees which is perfect kindergarten gets out they get on the bus the bus takes them around drops them off at the subdivision the bus now is 170 degrees comes back around first grade gets out they get on the bus it's now 180 it comes around it drops the kids off it's back to 170, it comes around, second grade gets on, it goes around, it drops the kids off. You see the pattern here? It comes back around to 170, third grade gets on, it's 180, all right? So now, let's put you in a situation where you have no thermostat in your system, okay? You can have an oversized radiator which could possibly even make the problem worse. So your bus comes up, kindergarten gets out, they get on the bus, it's 180 degrees now, it comes around, but there's no thermostat to slow the bus down. 
So the bus shoots right past subdivision, comes back around, nobody got off. It didn't slow down enough for the kids to get off. So now it comes back around, it's 180. First grade is now waiting to get on the bus, but there's no room. So the bus takes off, it's still full of kindergartners. First grade got left behind. It comes back around, it comes by so quick again, it doesn't drop anybody off, comes back. Now the bus is at 190 and second grade is waiting. But the bus is full of kindergartners. They never got off. Comes back around, it goes back. Third grade's out, we're at 200. Comes around, comes back. Still full of kindergartners. We're fourth grade's out now. We're at 210. Goes around, fifth grade, we're at 220. By this time, you're, you're actually starting to double and triple, but... Uh, then sixth grade gets out, you're at 240 and you've overheated, okay? You need to have that thermostat in that line so that it slows it down. Actually, the thermostat would be over here. Slows it down so that the kids can get off. If they can't get off, it can't pick up new kids and it just starts overheating on you, okay? So if you can't get a thermostat in your system... If you do have room for a washer, okay, this is last case scenario, but it does work. Uh, NASCAR used it in the old days. You can start off with a big hole in your washer, put one of those big washers in and anywhere you can get it and let the water flow through that. See what your temperature is, take it for a drive, come back. If you're still running hot, now you wanna start with a big hole in the washer so you don't overheat right away. So if you're still running hot, come back, put a smaller hole in the washer. Put a washer with a smaller hole. That will reduce the flow, and what your goal is is to get the speed of the water correct so that it drops the kids off and reduces. Now. The 180 thermostat, 190, it can really control the temperature because it's got that spring. It can open wider or a little bit. The washer, you're pretty much just kind of shooting for a range of, say, 190 to 200, okay? And then you change to a different washer in a different season, say, summer. Um, you might experiment with some washers and see if you can get that temperature back. But if you can do an inline thermostat, it will fix this problem. Okay, hope that helps. Like I say, like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell, share with a friend, do whatever you can, it helps me out. Have a great day.